Hey everyone, welcome to Left Paw Gaming. Today I have Animal Crossing New Horizons. It's a very creative game, a lot of intrigue to it, very popular right now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump in and dissect the game with my very own review. Welcome to Left Paw Gaming, here's Animal Crossing New Horizons review. If you enjoy the video, don't forget to hit the like button. Also, it never hurts to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any other videos posted. If you want to discuss the game further, leave a comment in the comment section below. In a game filled with creativity, Animal Crossing starts the game by you customizing your character. This is done at the airport when you're set to take off on your island getaway package for you to travel to a deserted island. That's right, you start the game at a deserted island and you build it from the ground up into a bustling cityscape. When you land, you'll meet the first two residents who will share the island with you, but they'll need help finding a good location for their tents. And that's how I ended up meeting Pierce, a workout enthusiast who loves catching bugs and running around the island <laughs> like a maniac, uh, whose tent turned into this sweet house here. Along with Pierce, the other islander to start my journey with me is Pashmina, who likes calling everyone kidders and fishing. Her tent turned into a sweet riverside home. Once you found a good spot for your tent and your first two residents, Tom Nook then entrusts you to find some materials for starting a bonfire. This bonfire is going to be used to celebrate your first night in your new adventure. And after the celebration, you wake up to find yourself in real time, or whatever the time is that your Switch says is real time. Right about now, you may be wondering, well, I wake up in real time, is that it? What else is there to do besides explore this island and make my house bigger? Well, there's <laughs> there's a whole progression system to the game. Um, the game took me about 24 days to complete, um, get the end credits to roll, I guess you could say. All of the story progression revolves around Tom Nook, the lovable yet bell-hungry host to your island getaway package. Everything you have to do with him is about transforming the island into a bustling tourist attraction. For the island to turn into the attraction that Tom Nook wants it to be, you become his right-hand man. It's your goal to rustle up residents, plant flowers, make the island look attractive to potential new residents. And how do you do this? You start by exploring the piece of island that you can explore. You'll notice that when you start your island adventure, um, your island is kind of broken into sections and elevations. You're first locked into a portion of your island that's blocked in by a river, and you can't get to the other side of the river until you unlock certain tools. Those are all hidden behind certain progression points in the story. The first major milestone comes when you get to build your first bridge. Once you build your first bridge, you'll have access to, you know, another side of the river, and that's where you're going to build your first houses. You actually get to pick the plots of land for the first three residents outside of you and the first two that show up on the island the first day to begin their journey. Uh, you'll pick the plot of land, and then you'll be tasked to do some crafting. And the crafting is going to require three interior items and three exterior items. To get these decorations, you're going to have to do a bit of crafting. But before you can actually start crafting, you actually have to find the materials to craft the items you need. Finding materials to craft things is as easy as shaking trees, chopping trees, hitting rocks with a shovel, or picking flowers. Once you have the materials in hand, it's real easy to craft all the products. Now, crafting is charming, yet very simplistic. And it also has a lot of depth. There's so many recipes that you can get, whether they're from the... Uh, monthly or seasonal events or just finding random shoes when you're fishing you get all these recipes and you can just make stuff on a moment's whim as long as you have the necessary materials it takes a couple seconds boom you have it it's in your inventory you can sell it or give it to your neighbors eventually Tom Nook is going to tell you that his phone has been blowing up with inquiries to have new residents or visitors to the island this is going to turn his eyes into money signs and give him the brilliant idea to change the resident services tent into the resident services building. Once he does this, Isabel's going to show up. Fan favorite to the franchise, and that is where the real end game goal is going to come into play. The end game goal is to get your island to a 3 star out of 5 star rating so that KK Slider shows up and performs for your island and makes it the new place to be. Like I said a little earlier, uh, this took me about 24 days and I didn't time travel. Didn't time travel for a couple of reasons. One, I've seen all the Arrowverse shows. I'm not trying to mess things up like The Flash did. Anyway, um, 24 days to get this done because everything takes real time, you know, real time time. 
So if a building has to go up, it'll take a full day or it'll be up the next morning. So progression is a little slower and it's built around that. You can time travel and make these things go a little faster, um, but you do that at your own peril. Well, KK Slider shows up to your island. You get to see the credits roll while he plays out a sweet tune of the New Horizons music. And now you enter the endgame. What happens in the endgame? Well, one of the major things that happens in the endgame is you get to have a show by K.K. Slider every Saturday. So that's something to look forward to. If you enjoy that or want to time travel and just have a show every day, that's cool too. Other things that you get to do in the endgame are learn more crafting recipes and just keep crafting things. Decorate the hell out of your island. Uh, you can acquire all fruit if you already haven't done that. Complete the Nook Mile stamp book, which there are so many things to do in there. Multiple stamps for each, like, entry. Um, catch all fish and bugs. That's going to take the whole year to do. There's 80 species of fish and 80 species of bugs. And then you can upgrade your house if you haven't finished that. Upgrade whatever shops you need to or build whatever shops you need to. My favorite thing to do is terraform the island. Yeah, once the credits roll, you get a new app on your Nook phone and you can terraform the island. Build rivers, cliffs, move things. It, it's awesome. I'm going to be spending so much time doing that. And the biggest thing to do is to acquire all the gold tools. The gold tools never break. You want them. The last major thing that you can do for the end game, if you haven't already been experimenting with it, is play with the quote-unquote stock market. That's where you buy turnips every Sunday and sell them throughout the week. See if the, the Nook Brothers have um, better prices than what you bought at. It's like a literal stock market. Um, but other than that, the world is yours. Explore and dive into whatever you want to. With any review, you got to get to the rating portion. And that's where we're at now. Right now, I'm going to rate the game. And to do the ratings, I came up with a system called Stickers. Uh, the stickers I'm going to slap up on the title screen here. There are two categories of stickers. One is the actual rating. What some may attribute those to a number scale, like a 1 through 10 or a 1 through 5 or a 5 star or whatever the rating system may be. The other one is like a supplementary uh, type of rating. So two types of stickers. The first one you can only get one, which is the actual rating rating. The second sticker you can have multiple of those, the subcategorization of it. So let's jump into what my rating for Animal Crossing New Horizons is. The goal of the channel is for me to find the ultimate game or gaming experience. And because of this, the best sticker that can be awarded is the ultimate sticker. So without further ado, the first sticker for Animal Crossing is going to be the superior sticker. The superior sticker represents a very high quality game with very few flaws or drawbacks. My experience with the game and completing the main quote unquote story was very enjoyable and relaxing. It's very easy to lose track of time while you're fishing, catching bugs, or just making your island look the way you want to. The ability to pick it up and put it down on a whim really enhances the chill vibe that the game exudes. I am very much looking forward to the seasonal and holiday events that the creators have in store. The second sticker that I'm going to give Animal Crossing New Horizons is the Award Seeker sticker. This sticker is a sticker that represents a game that makes it easy to want to complete and take part in everything that the game has to offer. In Animal Crossing terms, completing the Nook Miles stamp book, catching all 80 species of bug and the same number of fish, maxing out the size of my house, and fully decorating the space. Perhaps over time, you know, going in with a little feng shui, uh, terraforming and re-terraforming my island over time, and acquiring all the golden tools. And with all these, the most time-consuming of the aforementioned tasks is being able to catch all bugs and fish since I'm not going to be a time traveler. I refuse to do it. I'm just going to stick to the regular, you know, time changes as, as the days go and everything like that. So I'm going to catch bugs when they appear in March or April and not jump to a different month. And completing the Nook Mile stamp book as I have portions of that that are just still blank and I have no idea what could possibly go in there. So I'm very excited to keep playing and try to do absolutely everything that I can. So there you guys have it. My final rating for Animal Crossing New Horizons is superior, with the supplementary rating being Award Seeker. Tell me what you guys think in the comment section as I would love to hear your thoughts and opinions on the game too. As usual guys, thanks for stopping by. Don't forget to like and subscribe. I'll see you guys in the next video.